So now we've seen what you can control in the mixer into the filter. Let's listen to the, the filter itself. So we'll get rid ri of the ring mod. Let's uh, bring VCO one back down. Right, so they're both currently set on square wave. Let's uh, close the filter. And the first thing you'll notice is that moving that slider had no effect whatsoever and that's because the red cap slider here going into the filter that's controlling the amount of effect that the envelope generator has on how open the filter is so the envelope is making the filter fully open so it's defeating me moving the um, cutoff frequency down so actually let's bring that down open the filter again Bring a bit of resonance up. Unfortunately, as with many synths of this era, bringing the resonance up uh, attenuates the um, the low frequencies, which is um, a bit of a shame, because it can thin out the sound. So, <clears throat> raise the resonance a bit more. So that's about three quarters. Oh, and the little flies back. Come on, shift. Off, hop it. Oh great, it's now gone down into the key bed. And that's the thing, if you um, push the uh, resonance up high enough, as it says here, you've got minimum and then at the top, self-oscillation. So you can play the filter as an audio source. So that's been um, with both oscillators on square wave. Let's put them on um, sawtooth and let's take the resonance back down. Really is quite a nice sounding filter when you get down there with the, the saw wave. Quite juicy sounding. Let's bring the resonance up to halfway. Up to three quarters. Oh, that's nice. Wow. 
Let's bung the resonance all the way up. And that's the thing, you can still hear the oscillators, even though the filter is oscillating itself. So if you tune it right, you can not only play the filter, but you can play it in pitch with the other oscillators. And for some reason at the moment we seem to be having a little bit of LFO on the filter cut off and I suspect that's actually just the beating between the oscillators because they're not quite perfectly in tune. just the filter on its own. Perfect sine wave. And that's the thing, it's sort of, you bring up the fader for VCO1 and suddenly bring up two and yeah, the voltages are just drifting a little bit, so. Resonance down a touch. Let's bring in a bit of ring mod. Doesn't really seem to make any difference. So, filter on its own. VCO1 in, VCO2 in. Which is nice. So, these three sliders here, um, Next to the audio mixer, these control the filter. These are modulations for the filter. So the um, the black tipped one, uh, black for filter and amp controls, that is keyboard CV. So the voltages from the keyboard are sent to the filter so that the higher up you play, the more the filter opens, the lower down you play, the less the filter opens. And this is sort of continuously variable from sort of one-to-one -one relationship to having none at all. Maybe if I actually close the filter a little bit. But not quite that much. Bring that down. And it's equally dark everywhere. Put it back up. Now the switch here, um, in the upper position, it's keyboard CV on the slider. Um, if you put it into the lower position, this is, again, sample and hold mixer or pedal. So if you plug in an expression pedal, you can sweep the filter with an expression pedal. Never tried it. But if you've no pedal plugged in the back, you can modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter at 
audio rate, well, I say at audio rate, as we know by now, it can be modulated at the rate of whatever you send through the sample and hold mixer. So that can be audio rate, or if you switch VCO1 into low frequency mode, then it can be LFO control. And as we saw with VCO2, what this means is that you have two different LFO controls on the cutoff frequency. Um, because this yellow cap slider here, yep, yeah, it's sample and hold, it's yellow um, in one position, but the switch in the lower position, you've got the dedicated LFO control of the filter cutoff. Let's just hear that. So that's just the standard sine wave dedicated LFO, but with the black one next to it, with the sample and hold mixer, we can control that with VCO1 in low frequency mode. So we can also have square wave, pulse wave, or sawtooth wave um, modulating the filter cutoff frequency. First, yeah, let's try it in low frequency mode. So I'll get rid of VCO1 from the audio mixer. Switch into low frequency. And there you can hear it. That slide is a little bit squirrely. Or, as I say, if we turn um, in the sample and hold mixer, turn the VCO1 slider from sawtooth to square. Or we can have pulse by moving the pulse width slider under VCO1. And all the weird and wonderful things that we did when we were um, having FM of VCO2 by VCO1, you can do to the filter cutoff as well. So let's have some ADSR control of the speed of VCO1. Let's bring the sustain level down on the um envelope oh and that really stiff attack slider and actually given um given what we're doing i'm going to change which envelope generator is controlling the um filter put it to ar and also for the amp Again, we could have the LFO changing the frequency of VCO1 in low frequency mode. all the other weird and wonderful things that you can do with VCO1 in low frequency mode. <laughs> 